Hey, second grade friends, it's Mrs. Barhorst. Um, we are doing lesson number 17. Hopefully you were able to do your phonics dance um, with Miss Clymer, all the different ones. Also, we are going to take a look at the updated card deck review so you're able to, uh oh, I just got a marker on him. Um, you go through this page, spelling in high frequency word practice 17. If you feel like you um, need to do that, please feel free to do so. But we're going to go ahead and go to the back and start with review words. Our first review word, which is going to take in consideration all the different phonics things that we've learned so far, is number one, splash. Repeat splash. Good, splash. Go ahead and write it. I do hear the sh in the final position, like shark, and that's S-H. Check with mine. All right, our second review word today is chip. Repeat chip. Good, chip. So if I was finger spelling this, it would be ch, two letters that represent the sound. I. Go ahead and write chip. Should be C H I P. Check your work with mine. Number three is bunch. Repeat bunch. I have a bunch of flowers. Go ahead and write it. Start at the top. I -H -I -G -S. Check with mine. All right, kiddos, as you finish that up, we're going to move on to our sight words. Our sight words today that we're going to practice is number four, they, th, voiced th. That does follow the rule. Except the unfair position is here at the end. They is e, y. Number five. Number five is two. I go to the store, two. Go ahead and write it. Check with mine. I want you to try it. Don't wait for me to give you the answers. Go ahead and give it a try first. Number six is today. Write it. Repeat today. Write it. Check with mine. Very good, today. All right, families and teachers out there, I'm gonna save this box for you to do um, with your kiddo high frequency word practice. And we are gonna take a look at something new today. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up so it doesn't get confusing. All right, friends, so today we're going to learn a new sound. It's not a new letter, but it is a new sound. Please echo these words with me. Has. Good. Has. Is. His. Very good. What sound do you hear in the final position at the end? Zzz. Very good. Now let's look at these words and see what is making that sound. It's not a Z. Here they are. This word is has, is, and his. What letter is representing the z sound at the end of these words? It's an S. You're right. The voiced, the letter S makes the z sound in these words. S is the unvoiced sound of S, like sun. And z is the voice sound because it's vibrating like the th th. Z is the voice sound of S. When you are reading an unfamiliar word, try the S like sun sound first. If it doesn't sound right, then try the Z sound. That's your second choice when seeing an S. There is also a rule to help you to decide which sound the S will make. If the letter before the S is voiced, the S will make the Z sound. So let's take a look at the word has. Look at the letter right before the S. This is a vowel, and all vowels are voiced. 
This means the S in the word will make the Z sound. Let's try other words. Take a look at these words. I have them coded already. This is the word pins, like bowling pins. Look at the letter right before the S. The letter N is voiced, so this S will make the Z sound, pins. All right, now let's take a look at the other word. Look at the letter before the S. The letter T is not voiced, so this S will make the S sound, pits. Pins, pits. The voiced S is coded with a voice line through it. This line tells you the letter is voiced. So I'm gonna show you here that when you cross out the S, that's a voiced line. I'm gonna repeat the rule again because I think it's kind of confusing. Look at the letter before the S, which is an N. The letter N is voiced, N. Mm. So this S will make the Z sound, which is the voiced S. That's why I'm gonna cross it out. Now just to remind you again, this word here, is pits. The S sounds like s because the letter right before it, the T, is not voiced. Okay? But again, if you're reading a word and you're not really sure, your first choice is s like sun, and your second choice would be the z. Okay? So let's take a look. Here are your two picture cards. This is the one we've already learned, and that's sun s. Now here's your other one. This is rose z, rose z. Remember I said that the vowels are always voiced. Therefore, your S sounds like z. All right, so these are your picture cards and this is how you code it, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at page 17. Let's go ahead and start coding a little bit. So number one, this is one of the examples that we used. If you don't remember how to code, peek up there and you'll see that the little S with the voiced mark, okay? And because that rule is kind of hard to remember, we're just gonna try each sound and see what makes the most sense. So H-I-S, H-I-S, I already showed you this one, didn't I? H-I-S is a voiced S, and I know that because it follows the vowel. And the vowel is breathed because the S is a consonant. This is the word his, his. This is his marker. Okay, let's take a look at number two. Number two is A and S. And that rule, it does help to know that a vowel will make it a voiced S. So I already know that crossing out the S and breathing the A is going to help me with this word. And that word is as. Um, the sky is as blue as a bluebird, as. Okay, number three. Number three, I see it's a larger word. There's six letters. So I'm thinking to myself, how many vowels do I see? Let's look. I see an I and an E, so there's two vowels. I'm going to sneak a little V under each of those vowels. Make sure you make it tiny or it won't fit. Then each of the Ds are consonants. And I can see a pattern, and eventually we're going to learn some more patterns, but this pattern is the VCCV pattern. And I know that when it's a VCCV pattern, the division line goes between the two consonants. That way I can focus on one syllable at a time. I also know that when it is that pattern, that usually the first syllable is accented. Then I like to take a look at my vowels. My vowel I is followed by a consonant, so I know this I is going to sound like I. And my vowel E is followed by a consonant, so that's going to sound like E, eh, like elephant. Focusing on just the first syllable, hid, and then go to the second syllable, den, hid, den. Put it together, hidden, okay? The Easter eggs were hidden all over the yard, hidden, okay? And there is no picture of hidden. I'm going to change colors for you because I kind of ran into the other word there. All right, number four. Number four, right away, I can see a digraph. There's only one vowel. I do see digraph CK. 
I know that digraph CK and the final position is the spelling rule when following a short vowel. So I'm going to breathe that. And when I do CK, I'm going to cross out the C because it's silent. And that is the word buck, like a dollar, like a buck. How much does that pop cost? Ah, a buck. Okay, number five. Number five, H-I. I see a vowel. That vowel has no consonant after it. So I'm going to make on it. It's a short word with a long vowel at the end, so I need an accent mark. And that word is high, like hi, hello, how are you? Not the kind of high like a mountaintop is high. No picture of that. So then I'm going to go on to number six. Number six is D-R-U-M. Looking at that word, I can see the blend dur. You don't code blends. They still, I still hear their regular sounds. They just blend together nicely. So I guess I'll just look at the U. Vowel U is followed by consonant M. So I'm going to breathe it. Dur um, drum, a drum. And there's a picture of a drum. All right. Now we're going to take a look at the bottom. I'm going to get a bunch of different colors to help. Let's see, what other color do I want? Let's see, red, orange, blue, green. All right, we're going to use our new strategy to help us when reading and answering questions. I'm going to sneak that up there. All right, kiddos. So this is a very short story. It starts with the pond right here and it ends there. It's not very spaced. Sometimes kiddos get confused on where the story starts and stops. So for number seven, I'd like you to put R-U-W right after the period there. And that is our checklist to remind us we need to read, we need to underline, and we need to write the answer. You just use pencil if you want, but I like the color so you can see where I find it in the text. Number eight, after the question mark, go ahead and put an R, a U, and a W. Number nine, after the question mark, an R, a U and a W. And for number 10, looks like there's a long line here. So we're going to make a complete sentence restating the question. So right after that question mark, R, U, and W. All right, friends. So please follow along with me. We're going to start with the pond. And then I'm going to give you a minute to read on your own after this. Ready? Go. The pond has bugs in it. A sand bass is in the pond with the bugs. The sand bass swam past a bug, but he did not get it. All right, let's take a look at number seven. A sand bass, it must be a blank. It doesn't really say in the story, but I know there's clues in the story that I can underline to help me with the answer. Let's see, a sand bass must be a, well, I know it lives in a pond. Yeah, it's in a pond. And I know it swam somewhere. So if it's in a pond, it eats bugs, and it swam, what do you think it is? I think it's a fish. I think it's a fish. So even though it wasn't directly in the text, we were able to use clues in the text or in the words and be able to make an inference what we think. So we read and we underline. Now let's write fish. We're going to blend that together. Fish. Digraph SH. And we wrote the answer, so I'm going to cross out that W. All right, now blue, number eight. What swam past a bug? I remember it said swam past a bug. So I'm going to look for these words, swam past a bug. Here it is, swam past a bug. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the sentence. The sand bass swam past a bug. The sand bass swam past a bug. It says it right there. Okay, so pond, no. Sand bass, think so. Bug, no. Yep, must be the sand bass. Swam past the bug. And I forgot to underline, I'm so sorry. The sand bass swam past a bug. So I read, I underlined, and I wrote in my answer. It's all right there for you. A good reader is able to go back into the story, look for keywords, and find the answers to questions. Sometimes, even if you think you know the answer, you probably should go back and make sure. All right, friends. 
did the sand bass get the bug? Did the sand bass get the bug? Well, we read, I had forgot to give you a minute to go ahead and reread on your own. Go ahead and do that now. Reread that again. The pond and look for the answer. Did the sand bass get the bug? I think most of us are done. So get the bug. Did the sand bass get the bug? I saw that get the get right here, but he did not get it. Did he get the bug? But he did not get it. It says it right there. So I underlined in the story, and now I'm going to write in this bubble. No, he did not get it. Almost done. All right. So number 10 says, where is the sand bass? We read, where is the sand bass? The pond has bugs in it. A sand ba bass is in the pond. It says right here, a sand bass is in the pond. So let's go ahead and talk about, we read and we underlined, how are we going to take this question and restate it? Use words from it to help us when completing a sentence for number 10. Where is the sand bass? The question words are not needed in the answer. So let's take out where is. Now it just says the sand bass. I'm going to make that a capital T. The sand bass is in the pond. Period. That's perfect. The sand bass. I took that right from the question. That's what restating the question means. A minute to catch up. All right. Is in the pond. Is, don't forget those spaces, in the pond. Now, this is an answer. This is a statement sentence. So, oh, I'm sorry. Snuck off to the side here. It's going to have a period for the punctuation mark. Sand bass is in the pond. And then we're going to go back to the page that we did and write our new words. Let's make sure you get that done. You can pause me if you need to. Ooh, I think they might done. So number seven, the new words that's going to include the voiced S. The voiced S is something that we learned today. That's what our focus is. Get to the right page here. Ah, new words, as. Repeat as. Good, as, as, you would think would be a Z, but it's a voiced S following a vowel, as. The sky is as blue as a blue jay. Number eight, the next new word that has a voiced S in it is the word has, has, repeat has. Good, write it. As is inside has. All right, check with mine, H-A-S. And number nine, runs. The little girl runs to the store. Repeat, runs. All right, write it. Check with mine, R-U-N-S. Another voiced S. Okay, friends. So just keep in mind real quickly, when we're doing these pages to talk about sounds, don't you don't have to go back and do this, but when I say the sound z, z from now on, I'm sorry. When I say the sound z from now on, like zebra, you have two choices. If you're finger spelling a word and I say z, you could have that represented by a z like zebra or an s like rose, a voiced s. Okay. If I say k, it could be lots of ways. It could be c, comma, k. In the final position, we've learned CK when following a short vowel. Those are all your options. It's kind of like making a sound bank. So you'll know what your options are. And then most of the other ones are just like mm, monkey, ch, cheese. Okay, we need to do another one of these pages coming up. And we can do that no problem. Please keep in mind, teachers at home, there is a back to today's page if your kiddos are having a hard time. Um, 
coding or anything or working on the RUWs, you can just go back to RUWs if you want. Um, just code if you want or do the whole thing uh, if you think it's beneficial. And I think that's it today for Phonics Lesson 17. I'll see you Lesson 18. Thanks, guys.